You're listening to the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast, episode 14. And today we're going to look at how your teens' most emotional moments in their academic life, both the positive and the negative, can be valuable opportunities for them to learn, build on the experience and continue moving forwards. So stay tuned. I'm Katie Jones, and with over 15 years in education as an award-winning high school teacher, international external examiner, and as a study coach, I've helped thousands of students skyrocket their results and confidence. And this podcast is where I share all my insights, tactics, and tips with you, the parent, so you can help your hardworking team get happy, smart, and successful in their study, and have you both enjoy the journey along the way. This is the Parents of Hardworking Teens podcast. Hi, VIPs. How are you? I am doing great, though I have to admit that I'm even surprising myself here a little bit by talking about emotions because I'm not really the most touchy-feely person in general, though I have to say that as I get older... (laughs) I do seem to be getting more emotional about things. I don't know if you find that. Maybe it's just me. But age is starting to do that to me. But anyway, this is not about me. This is about your teen and how those emotional moments for them are amazing opportunities to learn or build on things or move them forwards. And this really aligns with our previous episode, number 13. Now, you don't have to listen to them together, but if this is something that you're interested in, then I would definitely recommend listening to that episode as well. And the thing I want to focus on with this today is how the things that stick with us, that we retain in our memory long term or with real clarity, are the things or the moments that are associated with a strong emotion. For example, we can likely remember where we were on 9-11, but we probably got no idea what we did on September the 10th. Or maybe you have a really strong memory of something amazing. So maybe you can remember what the weather was like on the day that you had your first child. Or it could be something terrible that's happened. But these were all moments where you had some sort of strong emotion. Now, I know this isn't anything new that I'm telling you here. And although I did actually go and look up some articles for this, for my own interest in preparation for this episode, I'm not going to go into, you know, the scientific theory of why this happens. But I will link a couple of those interesting reads up for you in the show notes though if you do want to go check that out so you can just go find those on your podcast app where you're listening to this or at www.rocksolidstudy.com forward slash 14 that's the digits one four where all of this is there for you but instead I want to really talk about this because we can capitalize on these moments for your team. We can use the situations where emotions are running high to make positive changes for their future and their study. So I'll give you an example. One of the topics that my students used to remember best from my teaching was the Kobe earthquake case study when I taught natural hazards and specifically teaching how that event affected different people in different places and in different ways. And that's because I used to teach it as a mystery. That was the task of the lesson. As in, the activity was that they had to solve the mystery and doing that, they learned all of the facts and information and connections that they needed. Now, I didn't come up with the mystery. I did not write it. It was a resource that was developed by an educator, David Leet, but it worked so well that I did actually make up a couple of my own for other topics. And I know that there are teachers out there and resources online that have got them for lots of different topics. But this one particularly seems to stick most, I think, because of the emotional element that there was to it. The students had to work in pairs and they had all these packs of cards with clues on them, telling them about the geographical details of the earthquake, telling them about different characters, who was there and why. And the title was, What Happened to Mr. and Mrs. Mason? Basically, the answer was that Mrs. Mason was killed in the earthquake 
because she was still asleep in their home in the old part of the city that was not built with earthquake-proof buildings. And Mr. Mason, her husband, survived because he was staying with their son, who was a lawyer and lived in the newer buildings in the more modern part of the city, and so they were earthquake-proof. And for weeks and months, and some students would even recount this story to me years later, those students could still tell me what the earthquake measured on the Richter scale, that all the buildings that were built after 1981 were made to be earthquake proof because that's where Mr. Mation was. They could even tell me where Mrs. Mation worked and that she was on a later shift that day, hence why she was still asleep in bed. And they could also remember the exact time of the earthquake. They could remember all of these facts that would have been so hard to memorize if they had just been listed out on a fact sheet. The size of the earthquake, the date and time, the names of the specific suburbs within the city, the types of people and the areas worst affected. Now, of course, this was partly because there was context. There was a storyline attached to the facts, which is a well-documented memory technique. But like I said, I used a couple of other mystery activities in other teaching topics or with other year groups. And the stickability of this one was because that particular mystery, that story, evoked emotions in them. There was suspense as they gradually pieced together what happened, the sadness at Mrs. Mason's death and for the sorrow her husband and son would have felt. There were also some feelings of unjustness at how the more affluent areas were less impacted and those people already perhaps struggling more in life were hit harder by the quake. And if I just told it as a story of what happened, this size earthquake hit on this particular day and here's which buildings and roads collapsed and which ones didn't, I'm sure that the stickability would have been lower than with those people included and the emotional element that was added to that case study. And just to be clear, there was no way I wanted them writing about Mr. and Mrs. Mason in their exam. But I did want them to be able to recall specific facts about the earthquake and the impacts and be able to analyse how those varied for different people in different places and the extent of the short and long term impacts. And this was a way to do that. And of course, it's no wonder that I also remember this lesson or these lessons and those students because it brought me those feelings of joy and satisfaction and pride in my teaching, which of course is why I remember it. It's not just the sad or negative emotions where this happens, it's the positive ones as well. Just like that lesson I told you about in last week's episode where I had the student slam her hands on the table and declare, miss this is gold. (laughs) Because I've taught thousands and thousands of lessons, but I obviously only recall specific details or vividly remember a small percentage of them. And yes, of course, the same is true for those lessons that didn't go so well (laughs) as well. Like my first ever lesson in my first ever teaching job where I'd planned all of this great stuff and the projector in the classroom just wouldn't work. So I remember that feeling, that emotion where there was panic inside of me but luckily only for a short time because being the diligent teacher I had a backup and of course that lesson stuck with me the lesson to me not the lesson (laughs) to have a backup plan especially when it comes to technology and having an online business I can tell you that the need for a backup plan has definitely stuck with me because I know what that feeling of panic is like and I know the feeling of relief and confidence when you can go to a plan B if you need to. And it's the same for your teen. What can they take from any of their emotionally charged moments? What can you help them get out of them, whether they're positive or negative? For example, I have quite a few parents tell me that their teen procrastinates and then things get to the last minute, everything turns into a big stress fest and sometimes there are tears involved. Now, even though... Of course, it's not fun in the moment. There is an opportunity here for learning and growth. Now, it's possibly not going to be able to happen in that moment. I don't think any of us, when we're in a bit of a meltdown mode, is really going to respond super calmly and positive to someone telling us that there's something we can take away from this right when we're in the middle of the drama. But maybe the next day there could be a conversation about what they were feeling, get them to really connect with that, why it was, what led to it, really connecting everything to the feelings that they felt and likely 
would like to avoid feeling again in the future and how that can happen. And side note, if procrastination is a thing for your teen, then definitely go back and listen to episode number two, where I cover the three root causes of why your teen procrastinates and how to solve for them. Now, another unwanted situation might be that they got a disappointing result in an exam or an assignment, and maybe they're feeling upset, disappointed, confused, maybe annoyed or frustrated, or just feeling that dent in their self-confidence. And even though it can be tempting to try to just move on as quickly as possible, to just get them back to feeling better, Building a learning moment in here for them will be really effective and more effective at doing it in that moment or quickly afterwards than doing so weeks down the line before their next assessment comes along. Because it's going to be tied to that acute emotion that they're feeling so they're more likely to retain that learning and therefore act on it. And like I said, the same goes for positive emotions as well. The elation or relief or happiness of a great result can be tied to what they did or didn't do, like not having their phone with them while studying or not multitasking or whatever it might be, what they did or didn't do that produced that result. The pride and delight after a parent's evening meeting can be linked to the habits or actions they need to keep taking or stop taking or ones that they need to build upon. These emotional moments are opportunities. Opportunities to not just lock in a memory or information, but also lock in those feelings that drive their actions and are going to create a result that they do want or to stop doing something that will help them avoid creating a result that they don't want. So look out for these opportunities, make the most of them, even if it goes against your instincts to just want to delete and get past that moment. And if you have a question about anything to do with memorizing information, building positive skills and habits, or a question about your teen's results or their experiences in their study, then I'd love to hear from you. Please email them in to support at rocksolidstudy.com. Put the subject heading as podcast question because I'm going to answer them here on the podcast. Once a month for the next three months, I'm going to do a special Q&A episode dedicated to answering your questions or your teen's questions. So either of you, if you have something you really want to pick my brain on or just something small or general that you've been wondering, go ahead and send it in. I can't wait to read your question and either I will respond right here on the podcast in the Q&A session or if I don't pick your question for the podcast, I will still reply with an answer to you personally. So either way, you will get a response from me. Okay, have a brilliant rest of your day and I will meet you back here next week for another episode. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure you head on over to www.rocksolidstudy.com and sign up for my free parent guide. The three huge mistakes even smart students make in exams and assignments and how to fix them immediately. And I'll see you back here next week.